Hey guys, this is the YouTube version uh, of my show. I don't love the idea of even putting it out like this, but I'm going to use YouTube to stay in touch with you guys from now on. That means this version is missing all the stories about coronavirus, insurrection, your Second Amendment rights, and more. All of these, of course, are usually my most honest, brutal, and important stories. Anyway, you can uh, get the entire unfiltered and uncensored show for free by going to thecomicsgym.com or nickdip.com. It's still free on both of these sites, too. Uh, and if you want extra content each day, join at patreon.com or thecomicsgym.com for the daily Encore show. Also, while you're uh, on these sites, please make a contribution to keep this show free and check out my tour dates. I'll be in Phoenix, uh, Raleigh, New York, and Texas in the up and coming months. Remember, uh, you guys keep thinking it, I'll keep saying it, and please enjoy and please share today's episode. Talk to you soon. All righty. Oh, yeah. How are you, folks? Welcome to the final day of the week, Thursday. And um, guess what? The fucking Red Sox bullpen did it again. <laughs> They're playing the Angels, who were a good team this year at, at Fenway. Shut them out two nights ago. These sons of bitches. Bogarts hits a mammoth home run in the eighth, bottom of the eighth, I think it was. To put us ahead 4-3. And we end up losing 10-4. <laughs> what did I curse him? And once again, another great pitching job. The starting ERA is 2.37, which is fucking really freaking good. And the bullpen, I can't describe it. One guy came in and mowed down the side, three strikeouts. I forget who it was. Um, I still have faith in him, but I just... <laughs> this thing where you put a guy on second... In extra innings. What is this? Girls softball? Yeah. Fucking hate that. Anyways, <laughs> final 10-4. And the Bruins get their asses handed to them for a fifth straight time by Carolina. Um, we lost to them three times. The three times we played them in regular season, and they've beaten us the first two games of playoffs. <laughs> they are fast, young, big, and mean. And the Bruins are just chippy. You know, they fucking Bruins will mix it up with anybody. But uh, they <laughs> It got ugly last night. I wanted to call you and go put this on, Dallas. It got, <clears throat> it just got ugly. There was some hits. I'm talking NFL type hits. They caught one of our defensemen with his head down behind the net. This guy came in, clean check, shoulder, 100 miles an hour, knocked him fucking. He almost had the knockout arms. He fucking croaked him. He was gone for the rest of the game. Five minutes later, McAvoy does the exact same thing to one of their guys right in the middle of the ice and then does it to another guy. And then all hell breaks loose. Uh, there was a, a, one fight. Again, they, they're not too quick to drop the gloves because you can get, you know, whatever. You get canned if you get in two fights or whatever. But, it, but it's ugly. There was slashing. Marshawn took a two-hander, hits a guy right in the stomach. Can't believe they didn't throw him out. But it was after the goalie. Their goalie cracked him with a stick in the legs. It got fucking ugly. I cannot wait. I don't even care if the Bruins win this series. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because the Bruins ended. I'm sorry I'm boring you people. I know. You, you pro but if, you, you got to watch hockey. You'll forget fucking basketball was ever invented. Um, it's just fast and violent, and it was just so fucking good. Anyways, speaking of violence, let's get on with the show. Mm, and I'll see you guys. Oh, one other thing I want to mention. My wife made me aware online, like on Facebook, people are pretending that they have tickets to my show tomorrow night and reselling them. It's that, you know, it's the Nigerian fucking scammers. There's people, because even my fans picked up on it. They're going, hey, I get five Nick DiPaolo tickets if you want to buy, but the show's been sold out. 
So it, it's a scam. Don't fall for it. Fucking Nigerians. They got anything better to do? Shouldn't be put, putting your kids' lip plates in? <laughs> Nick, that's horrible. No, I know Nigeria's kind of nice. Look at this. I ate, a, I ate a sleeve and a half of saltines before I went to bed. <laughs> oh, my God. I got to go in there. My Achilles is killing me. I got to go in there and somehow get a sweat on. All right, let's get it. Let's get to it. By the way, I will have a gun on stage or a, a fucking a Bowie knife. So think twice. Dave Chappelle, as you know, this is a, what we call a follow-up story from yesterday. A little bit more on Chappelle's attack. He was a wannabe rapper. Any, any rappers or wannabe rappers ever do anything productive? Seriously. Um, I like that fucking coat Dave's got. He'd give it to me off his back, I think. I, I go, Dave, I punched a trans. <laughs> oh, man, take the coat. <laughs> it was a trans, man. Uh, the man who attacked Chappelle, man, how about boy, during a concert Tuesday is a wannabe rap star. We know, again, how productive they are, to, what they add to society, who has put out a song <laughs> named after the famous comedian that apparently references the Hollywood uh, Bowl um, the guy's name is Isaiah Lee's. 20- There's something wrong with the black man's mind. There's something wrong with his mind. He'd be 23 years old. There he is. Yeah, yeah he looks normal, huh? <laughs> this, I, you know what? I almost feel bad. I'll read you his history. I almost feel bad for the kid. It's ju- he's just a product of a fucked up culture, fucked up society he's growing up in, a media driven. It's all, he's like, the perfect storm for this shit. There's a million of them like him, I swear. Isaiah Lee, 23, was booked with felony assault with a, a deadly weapon <laughs> over the attack on the 48-year-old comedian at Tuesday night's Hollywood Bowl uh, show. Lee raps under the name No Name Trapper, <laughs> according to social media, and has a verify, verified Spotify profile that boasts, and here's another thing that scares me. He's got 6,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. Do you have to subscribe to that? No. So, yeah. Do you? Yeah. So this motherfucker's got six hours to be paying him? Here I am writing clever shit for 35 years? What do I got to do? Put a fucking horns on my head? They're already there. <laughs> Track two of one of his several albums. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's 23 or 22. 2020's Born and Die in the Trap is called Dave Chappelle. That's the name of the song. <laughs> ow, 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 ow. While most of the lyrics are mumbled, Lee at one point seemingly references getting into the Hollywood Bowl, which is the location where Tuesday night's attack took place. And there he is looking at his elbow saying, what the fuck? I'm not crazy. I just don't give a fuck. The song lyrics are puzzlingly mostly repeating, laugh at you niggas a joke. Watch your mouth. I don't like that word coming out of anybody. Just flip Wilson. He did now. Lee also had a decent social media following with 32,000 followers and only, he only follows 80 people, Dave Chappelle being one of them. He posted a bizarre video of himself yesterday with a filter to give himself a bloody nose and devil horns. He's kind of got a sense of humor. At least he gave himself a blood. Isaiah Lee was charged with assault with a deadly weapon. Bail is set at 30,000. We got a picture of that? What? There you go. <laughs> This looks like something Ron Popeil invented. The guy came up with a pocket fishing. This Otherwise is Otherwise known as the gangster's bayonet. The, the gangster's bayonet, Dallas calls this. I think this is great. The, I'm going to sell, I'll market this fucking. This is what you cut your Thanksgiving turkey with. LAPD official said Lee was armed with a replica gun that ejects a knife. <laughs> Watch the? out because I'm... <laughs> It would have been more dangerous if there was a flag that said bang coming out of it. <laughs> Lee was, now here's where it gets sad, you know, a little bit. Lee was a ward of the state who was taken in by his grandma, Joy Chattel, a community, a community activist. So that has to tell, that tells you all you need to know about his upbringing. A community activist known as Mama Joy. She died suddenly when Lee was 14, leaving him with a disability and displacement anxieties, according to a 2021 court filing, which I believe. Uh, the kid's grown up with zero love, basically. Uh, the filing, I don't mean to sound like fucking Mr. Rogers here. I'm not trying to say he's not accountable for his act, but I'm just saying, it's it just, it's par for the cause. 
The filing was related to her estate, which had an abolitionist history. Her death left the future of the property in jeopardy. So there he is with his elbow intact. But you know what I mean by a perfect storm of ward of the state? You know what I mean? No fucking parents. Grandmother was probably, <laughs> like Chris Rock says, what did he say? <laughs> when, you're, when you're black and you, you call you... <laughs> oh, fucking Nick, forget it. Stop. <laughs> Something, you know, when you call your mother Pam. <laughs> Your grandmother something than your mother Pam. I don't know. Uh, yeah, you call your grandmother mum and your mum Pam. <laughs> God, did I butcher that. Look at it. Is it. How's this look? Is it better? This is how I take selfies. You heard right is the headline. Amber Heard got emotional. I don't usually do this type of shit. You guys know, right? But that picture right there turned me on. I was picturing, yeah, you don't want to know. It, I was picturing putting her hand in a panini maker. No. Amber Heard got emotional. I, I, I read a little bit. It got me hooked. It was too dirty and salacious not to. Emotional, as she uh, told the jury about a time in May 2013 when Johnny Depp allegedly performed... Uh, a non-consensual cavity search on her, apparently while looking for his drugs. Heard said the, uh, I did that, that's happened to my wife. I said, where's my, <laughs> I said, no, where's my Viagra? <laughs> we, we ain't gonna get this thing done without it. Uh, Heard said, yeah, she's like Karen, you know, oh my God, this is funny, I gotta use this on stuff. My wife's like Karen when she steals Henry's keys when he's trying to go out on a Friday night. I'm going out, not with these keys, you're not. That's like me going out like to have a beer by myself. My wife's got my Viagra, not with these pills, you're not. Heard said the moment began when an allegedly high depth, <laughs> was there any other kind of depth? <laughs> Asked me where it is and how long I've been hiding it, apparently referring to his cocaine, she said. At first, the actress didn't know what depth was referring to, though he screamed at her, you know, um, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. Depp started patting her dress before, this is what caught me to read the, uh, ripping both the dress and her underwear off. All right. She's fucking smoking. Yeah, focus, exactly. He then proceeds to do a cavity search, Heard said, uh, with a whimper. So he's looking for his cocaine in the poor girl's private parts. Hello? 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 Anybody there? Anybody there? He just shoved his fingers inside me. Oh, delicious. She continued, adding that I just stood there standing at the stupid light. He had a light on it, like he was a gynecologist. Uh, or a miner's hat, I don't know. Hers said, adding he twisted his fingers around inside her. Oh, 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 ow, 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 oh, oh, stop, oh, stop, oh, oh, oh. Johnny Depp threatened to kill Amber Heard once while they were in the Bahamas, the actress claimed in a bombshell testimony. He slams me up against the wall by my neck and holds me there for a second and tells me that he could fucking kill me and that I was an embarrassment, she said. Holy moly. The threat came while they were in the Bahamas with his children. Then in the, the kids were in their early teens on his yacht for one last trip before he had to sell the boat to J.K. Rowling. <laughs> You know you got some, that, you know that's a nice boat and you're going to troll you there by it. Um, Heard left the yacht by a helicopter, like bad comedians do when they do a ship, uh, with his daughter, his daughter. She took his daughter off, protecting her. Boy, this ain't looking good, Johnny. Uh, who was crying to her, according to the testimony. During her recounting of this incident, Heard got the biggest reaction from Depp all day. It came when Heard's attorney showed her text message Depp sent her after she left the boat, and the actress said, that's what he was sending me while I was taking care of his daughter. Depp shook his head and said, wow. So. I don't know, I don't know if he meant, wow, those are lies, or wow, you know. <laughs> Oh, wow, I can't believe you have those. It might, it might have shocked him just to, to hear it come from himself. That's right, because he, he, he's in a blackout state, right? When he's fucking, that fucked up. 
I, I've been there, not blacked out, but I've looked at texts up. I looked at tweets upset and said, wow, did I? Bl- <laughs> did I really tell uh, Jack Dorsey to suck a dick and die? Johnny Depp would pass out and, l- <laughs> here's some more. Uh, he'd pass out and lose control of his body, and everyone in his circle was forced to clean up after him and afraid to confront him about it, Amber Heard said on the stand. She said, I cleaned up after him, she testified. This man lost control of his bowels, and I cleaned up after him. You believe that? (laughs) Heard also said she saw Depp security guards change his pants in front of her which prompted the actor to chuckle from his seat. <laughs> Don't make me like you, Johnny. <laughs> he looks like he's laughing there. He passed out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Can you imagine? He passed out in his own sick, she says, which means vomit. Uh, and then he walked around saying he didn't have a problem. <clears throat> hmm. Well, um, <laughs> look. What you guys got to remember is he's the plaintiff. She's the defendant in this lawsuit. She's, uh, he's suing her for defamation. Now, I, I got to believe that, I don't know, today's jury, um, but I got to believe those are pretty compelling stories and um, doesn't make him look like a good father or whatever the uh, specific charges are. But I say we give him a break. He's a pirate, for Christ's sake. You know what I'm saying? You see what happens, man? You think they got it all, people? Rich and beautiful and on a boat, a fucking giant yacht in Venice. And meanwhile, your wife finds you on a ripped beanbag chair, shit in your pants. And he's looking for his drugs up your snatch. I mean, I don't know. I might, uh, I might transition. <laughs> what does that even mean? Uh, makes no goddamn sense whatsoever. <laughs> a man goes to a party, he loses his party. at the party. Kennedy assassinates Mayorkas. Well, that's usually the words don't go in that order. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. That's how the newscasters say it when they hit a Spanish word. On Wednesday, insisted he was unaware that the person his department tapped to head up his Orwellian Disinformation Governance Board once called Hunter Biden's laptop Russian disinformation. He's saying he didn't know that. Either way, that makes you either look incompetent or a lying piece of shit. So either way, you shouldn't have a job, but he typifies, I said to Dallas, he typifies the left. He's ballless, takes marching orders, no, no balls, what does not give a fuck about the truth, just blinded by his ideology. Anyways, my favorite senator, John Kennedy from Louisiana. Well, I'm just going to ask a question. In Dallas, you grew up in Alabama, didn't you? Would you say fucking a sheep worse than fucking your cousin? Well, I don't know. Sheep are softer. Uh, okay, but it's not the question I asked. <laughs> Dallas said that with such conviction, my hair stood up. <laughs> Senator John Kennedy, a uh, Republican, Louisiana, who we love, by the way. He's always got sayings like, well, he was more nervous than a porcupine in a balloon factory. <laughs> stuff, stuff I used to hear on Popeye. Senator John Kennedy pressed Mayorkas on who hired Jankowitz, that's the singing witch, and whether the secretary knew about her comments about the laptop that became the basis of a series of blockbuster exposés by the Post in 2020. And um, so he's questioned about it, and this, and here he is, the dimwit. This is how he answered. When you, uh, when the department picked her, did, did it know that she had said that Mr. Hunter Biden's laptop is Russian disinformation? Um, Senator, uh, let me, let me uh, repeat myself and add one uh, other fact. I was not aware of that. Uh, we do not discuss the internal hiring process. Ultimately, it's the secretary I'm responsible for the decisions of the Department of right. Homeland Security. When, when, uh, when the department picked Ms. Jankowitz, did it know that she had vouched for the veracity of the Steele dossier? 
uh, Senator, let me um, repeat myself and add an, an additional fact. Oh, well, um, uh, one, uh, we do not discuss uh, internal hiring processes. Oh, my God. Two, Fuck. I was not aware of that fact. Uh, three, as the Secretary of Homeland Security, I am responsible for the decisions of the Department. And four, uh, it is my understanding that Ms. Jankowicz is a subject matter expert in the field for, in which she will be working on behalf of the Department. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> That's all he's fucking said. I don't know nothing about that. That's all he had to say. You're lying. <clears throat> And you're a piece of shit. I love Kennedy. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> Bald and fuck you. Mayorkas, God, I got the slimy eyes today. Allergies. Mayorkas also claimed he was ignorant of cringeworthy TikTok videos that we've all seen <clears throat> uh, of Jankowicz made in which she sang her edition of the Mary Poppins tune, Supercalifragilisticexpialidouchebag. <laughs> that was pretty good. Write that down, somebody. Um, yeah, he, he, he didn't know about this video, is what, uh, what he fucking said. I don't know nothing about that. Really? What do you know about? Anything? God. Look at her. Maniac. I mean, she called the laptop Russian disinformation. She was wrong about another big one, too. And this guy's saying she's an expert in her field. God, what you're witnessing, folks, not to get too serious... You're witnessing um, a country, you, a, a cultural revolution. That's what all this is. I'm doing a story later on about tampon machines and boys' bathrooms. That's a cultural revolution. That You're in the middle of it. And unless somebody stands up and fucking, seriously, I don't, I've said this before, and I don't mean to be hyperbolic, how else do you stop uh, as his round of questioning concluded, Kennedy suggested a task for Mayorkas when he returned to DHS, saying he should confront the person who recommended hiring Jankowitz, and I would fire him on the spot, which is exactly right. Um, so why don't he? Anyways, this is the equivalent. He just... He just bitch slapped my orcas with, with, with that. Uh, this is what he did to my orcas, basically. <laughs> That's what Kennedy just did to that little bitch, my orcas. What's the idea? <laughs> Ow. Anyhow, any he, any. Let's move on to some more, some more bitch slapping. Only at thirty thousand feet. Uh, yes, another clip from a plane. I just we're, we're watching the fabric of this society just crumble, man. Uh, Hansy passenger, a Frontier Airlines passenger. <laughs> right away, when you hear spare at a Frontier. <laughs> uh, Frontier Airlines passenger who went viral after he was duct taped. I can't believe that's, I mean, they've done this many times. It's, a, it's the move to go to. to it, it should be on a commercial for duct tape. <laughs> uh, he was duct taped to his seat for allegedly groping two flight attendants and assaulting another. Uh, he's been sentenced to 60 days uh, in the slammer, which I don't bye know. Bye bye, dickhead. That doesn't sound that bad, really, for what this guy did. We'll show you in a second. Maxwell Berry pleaded guilty Tuesday to three counts of assault uh, within maritime and territorial jurisdiction for his antics aboard the flight from Philly to Miami in August. Boy, they kept a lid on this one. I don't remember seeing this, right? ABC News reported. The 23-year-old who faced a year and a half behind bars and a $15,000 fine. Also was sentenced to one year of supervised release. He must surrender by August 1st. I didn't hear anything about he can't fly again, right? I'm guessing. <laughs> uh, cell phone footage showed the uh, frisky flyer being duct taped to the back of a seat before he was arrested by waiting uh, cops on three counts of of uh, battery. <laughs> Tried. I did the best I could. What about me? What am I supposed to do? 
<laughs> What's this? Um, he, you know, he's obviously drunk, but the, the, we're going to show you the clip is about a minute long. At the end, the best part is the black people sitting behind them laughing their balls off, which makes me love them. They fucking can't believe this insane wiper. And they, it's like they're watching a movie. Uh, go ahead. Help! This man got the right dentist, that's all I'm gonna say. The dentist Help. is on point. That's a Patriots hat. Ladies and gentlemen, just make sure your seatbelts are fastened. We are landing. I did the best I could. What about me? What am I supposed to do? <laughs> oh my God, folks, we are coming apart at the gut. 60 days? He grabbed, oh, I'll, I'll read on. The video showed the Norfolk, Ohio man scuffling with a male flight attendant. Why can't they say struggling anymore? Well, that was a scuffle, actually. With a male flight attendant and yelling profanities while sitting at a window seat. He didn't like the fact that he couldn't get a Diet Coke. Who the fuck do you think you are? Who the fuck? Do you think you are? <laughs> An arrest report said he ordered two drinks and then asked for another before br brushing his empty cup. I've tried this. Against the backside of a... Fe I, use a I usually use the male guy to piss him off. Backside of a female flight attendant who told him, don't touch me. Barry proceeds... So that's sexual harassment. I... I, he's getting off light, isn't he? I know. Barry proceeded to spill his new drink on his own shirt, prompting him to go to the bathroom, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and come out shirtless. Glad he didn't spill on his pants. Am I right, folks? Uh, <laughs> yeah, really, Nick? Uh, <laughs> Glad he didn't spill it on my pants, right, folks? Anyways, shirtless, according to the report. He then walked around the cabin, no shirt on. <laughs> Why can't I see these on my flights? Uh, Grope the chest of two flight attendants. Again, I don't know if they're male or female today. You don't know. We don't know. Do we know? We don't know. Um, anyways. Yeah, who don't with 12 fucking sea breezes in you? He came from behind, put his arm around both of them, two females, and groped their breasts again. The arrest reports... <laughs> Barry later, that wasn't enough, punched a male flight attendant who was asked to watch him following the in-flight chaos. This is terrific. Two of his victims attended Tuesday's sentencing, Jordan Galarza, whom Barry struck, and Tamara Burgess. Sounds like a black chick. Uh-oh, Dallas. That's my sister, yeah. Half-sister. <laughs> That's Dallas's last name, Burgess, who was groped. WPLG reported. My number one role, this is the flight attendant talking, on any aircraft is to protect the passengers, including Maxwell Berry, who we did get to Miami safely that day. Well, you fucking wrapped him up like he was a, <laughs> you put him in bubble wrap. Uh, we, we did get him to Miami safely that day, Galarazza reported, adding that the tape used to restrain the passenger may have seemed a little bit barbaric, but it worked per perfectly. And no one got hurt because of how we did what we did. His attorney, the kid's attorney, Jason Christ, also read from letters that were sent to the court on the client's behalf. Mr. Berry is looking forward to putting this incident behind him, Christ later told. We presented significant mitigation to the court, but respect the court's judgment in this case. Berry also expressed remorse, the guy himself, saying he was embarrassed uh, by his actions. Oh, fucking idiot. <laughs> Judge Ra Robert uh, Scola Jr. told him there's no delete button and that people cannot think they're able to go on a plane and act like, uh, act this way. Really, Judge? Have you been flying lately? <laughs> if you don't act like that, they'll kick you off. No need for fucking in flight entertainment. Am I right, folks? I mean, come on. <laughs> Some of the worst time rim shops ever. <laughs> 10 minutes later. 
What's the um, the headline to the? Where is it? You fucking fuck! I didn't even put it in there. Anyways, let's. It says fucking queers. That's the headline. Fucking queers. <laughs> of course, I, of course, I don't put it in there. Disturbing videos on TikTok show teachers bragging about how they initiate classroom discussions on sexual orientation and gender identity. That's stuff. Yeah, that's exactly what it you is. You want to call it by its name? That's strictly for. While it is not known what grade cohorts these people who claim to be teachers preside over, some proudly talk about the need to introduce sexualized content to children as young as three years old. Hey, little boy, do you want some candy? Look at Woody Woodpecker here. <laughs> Fucking twisted. Can I just say something? Let me do a little op-ed here. <laughs> you know what, gay people, and again... I know there's a lot of gay people who will agree with me on this. Back in the 50s and whatever, the 60s, the far right, the religious crew, whoever you want to call them, uh, were homophobic, at least, at least you were claimed. And they used to say, the Christian right would say, They're gonna, you'll, come, you'll see they'll come after our kids. Well, guess what? Guess what? We're here. Were they that fucking wrong? And that's not a slight against, again, I'm in show business. Plenty of gay friends. I mean, uh, Elton John's my favorite. I'd blow him tonight or eat his <laughs> pussy, one or the other. But you got, look at this thing, okay? This is grooming. They're excited. They're excited. There's a touch of mental illness with a lot of gay people are happy, they rate, whatever. But I'm saying, I don't think mainstream gay people like this shit either. I'm guessing, I'm hoping. If not, fuck you all. Right in the mouth and the ass. Oh, gross. But look at that haircut. It just screams. I suck cock and I love it. Yummy, yummy, yummy. No, that might be a girl. I was wrong on that one. I can't tell. I don't know. Huh? I don't know. I don't know what it is either. That's the point we're at now. Goodness gracious, Heloise. Um, many progressive teachers who publicly. Uh, oh, are we going to watch the video? Yeah, here's some more. Sorry. There you go. Hi, I'm a queer teacher. I'm gender fluid. I am also a witch. I would come out to my students every October on National Coming Out Day. I would use that as an opportunity for my students to learn how Please to receive somebody coming call. out to them. I ended up telling the, my students that I was gay. I was, because I kind of alluded that I was. So I kind of let them wonder and ponder on it. So instead of teaching social studies today, um, they just asked me a whole bunch of questions about being gay. Let's talk about gender roles and talking about them talk. in the classroom. Talking about gender is not something that's out of the realm for children. Your pussy Research stink. says that there is no age too young to talk about pretty much anything. Kids okay. as yeah. young as Pause. three and four. And who better to say that than black parents because your kids turned out so well. Yeah, let's talk about anything at that age. If they're ready to uh, fucking shut the fuck up, you fuck stain. Go ahead, dinkweed. Are actually aware of their gender identity. If they know about it, they're ready to learn about it. So very aware of who they like and who they don't like. They're very much ready for these topics and are way more accepting than adults when it comes to discussing these topics. My classroom is the gayest. Pause. She just said it all. They're way more accepting. Yeah, they're three years old. They can't argue back. You dumb fucking lice-ridden homo. Nick, that's horrible. I know. I was just teasing. <laughs> uh, I don't know how I forgot this one. Anyways, I don't mean to be homophobic, but these people, they're going after your kids. I, I, I don't like that. Ah, uh, the homosexuals. <laughs> Many progressive teachers who publicly posted, what's it? We got more. Oh, there's more? God, I'm getting queasy. Go ahead. Places probably on the planet. Most days of the week, I come to school in stilettos so I can create an explicitly queer space for all of my students. Everything is completely covered in rainbows. I've got flags everywhere. I've got queer literature. Parents might complain, and there's actually a way to be really sneaky about supporting specifically queer students. Dropping a pink triangle somewhere in your room makes a huge difference because kids look for that. Recently, we started wearing pronoun pins, and the kids get to pick a new pronoun pin. We have some that pick like she, her every single day. And we have some that changed up. And I just double check with them if I call home what name they want, what pronouns they want, because a lot of them will just use their given name and their given pronouns. So just double check that. I like to avoid gendered language when I talk to my students. My students really like guys, gals, and non-binary pals. I even refer to them I as 
rules, you know, just to keep it light and fun. Say that to third grade are not ready for such topics is actually internalized homophobia and transphobia. Uh, is that right? How about I put my foot up your... I don't know. I don't know what to put it up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, folks. So, I, 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 again, and I don't think they represent the mainstream. I, I hope the fuck they don't. But um, they're excited about confusing your kids and shit. So lucky. Again. And just out in the open. It's, 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 it, admitting that they're hiding the fact around parents' backs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're on the internet. Now, if the parents are paying attention, and that's my kid's teacher, I'm there the next day. I'm going to pull a... a, pull a uh, anyways. I'm going to do uh, whatever. Many progressive teachers who publicly posted their shock and content online and had their videos shared by the popular conservative viral account libs of TikTok. This girl put the, this, she started this thing? Was, she's got like 1.2 million followers. Uh, of course, they went after her, which was censored in recent weeks after being blacklisted and having an expose written on the account by the Washington Post's Taylor Lorenz. Uh, libs of TikTok has reached over 1.2 million followers since having over 600,000 just weeks ago. Loving it. In response to a growing number of cases where teachers and education officials were allegedly sexualizing students, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, the next president, signed the Parental Rights in Education Act in March, prohibiting the teaching of sexual orientation and gender identity in classrooms from kindergarten to third grade. All right, so that's a little taste of, um, and that Taylor Lorenz, the one who fucking went after, lives at TikTok. Um, they, so somebody went after her a couple weeks ago, and she was crying about it. They, they put my name online, and they, they, you know, my address, people, it's, it's horrible, and she's crying, and she's, that's what she had been doing to people for years. So anyways, final story? Final story of the week, ladies and gentlemen. Buck seeing red. Oh, goodness, my favorite color. According to a new poll, Oregon Governor Kate Brown. A, oh, my God, another beautiful woman from the left. Those stupid glasses. Look, at she's got my frames. She wants a... I can smell her ass from here. A Democrat is officially the least popular governor in America. Well, that's since de Blasio sat down, I guess. And considering the law she just signed, it's not hard to see why. I reported on this. This isn't new, by the way. It's in my act a year ago about tampon machines in the boys' room. I said, hey, sometimes it's good. I go, you're in a club. You get in a fight. You run in. You, you know, you're bleeding from the... Come back out on the dance floor. You get a couple... Patrice O'Neill has the best bit about having periods and how he horrible. I'd hate that. Imagine if you knew every month, at least for a week, your nose are going to bleed. <laughs> Thanks to the Menstrual Dignity Act, thank God they passed this. I put it right up there with the Civil Rights Act of 1964. The Menstrual Dignity Act that just passed local taxpayers are now on the hook for thousands of new tampon dispensers in boys' bathrooms. This latest madness, which affects every public school and college in the state of Oregon, is expected to cost up to $400 a machine. So just do the math there. And, and, and by the way, here's another one. They, they don't mention this article that I did about a year ago. And I told, we talked about it on the show. They, they, made, they got rid of urinals in men's, in men's rooms, not unisex bathrooms, in men's rooms, they got rid of urinals in state government buildings because women don't use them. So it's not enough, even when they don't have access to some, if it, <clears throat> and they do use them. I've seen women pee standing up. Cost me 50 bucks, but it was in Jamaica, and the girl was very nice. And school custodians aren't the only ones upset about it. This will show all of our youth, and especially our trans youth, that the bathroom they're using, that affirms their gender, that it's for them, argue one Portland resident who should be put to sleep tonight. And it has the products there that they might need, the woman said. 
Get out of my room, you sick. Legislatures agreed expanding a bill that was originally intended to give female students free sanitary products. See, but that's not enough. At school, now in an absurd gesture, the state has decided to affirm the right to menstrual dignity for transgender, you know, all two of them, intersex, non-binary, and two-spirited students. Two-spirited. I'm two-spirited. Two-spirit students. That's a new one. I haven't heard that one yeah, yet. Yeah, no, that one's been flying around. I haven't heard that one. Well, that was my Indian name. <laughs> <laughs> flying Red Hole. <laughs> and Chief Stinky Poo. I don't know. I'm fucking tired. It's the end of the week. Spirit. <laughs> By trying to minimize negative attention that could put them at risk of harm. Everything's done at the risk of harm. Even Twitter, Elon Musk, the people that are fighting him, all these NGOs that are fighting him, they use that. People that are vulnerable are gonna be harmed by language. It, 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 folks, anytime it's for your safety, like anytime you see that, it's just code for them shutting down more rights. It's for your best interest. You really think we're that stupid? That could put them at risk of harm during menstruation. Oh my God, I can't take the, the language. It's so gross. In the state's guidance, school officials are told to use gender neutral phrases like menstruating students instead of girls. Even when like, this is an insult. If you're, if you're a father and your son goes to the school, they're calling your son a fucking girl. That's how I take it. So I would say, you know what, son? You can beat up girls and boys. Go nuts. <laughs> and that would be jail the rest of my life. Uh, menstruating students instead of, how about menstruating fucking retards? When it comes to explaining the reproductive process, teachers are instructed to tell kids that someone with a uterus and ovaries may begin to menstruate instead of girls. There's no such thing as a female hygiene product, they say. The toolkit argues only menstrual products. Obviously, state leaders don't bother to consult their counterparts in Illinois, where a similar move has literally opened the floodgates to expensive plumbing issues and mischief. When you give a grade, this is actually an insult too. I know they mean a dependent kid. When you give a grade school boy something that's adhesive, they're gonna put it in place, put it in places everywhere but what it belongs. And that, that's true, but don't make, don't generalize about little boys either. <clears throat> you know what I'd do as a little boy? I'd bring it to, to recess and that girl that I was in love with, Jenny. I said, you know, the one, she, she always get the fucking, her parents give her a submarine sandwich for lunch. I would trade her, even though she's two and not bleeding till I punch her in the face. What? Cut! <clears throat> Look at this kid. What are these? He goes, oh, fireworks, <laughs> two bottle rockets. Apparently I'm gonna shoot them blindfolded <laughs> and drink a pink martini. <laughs> that's, ah. Anyways, that's what the Republicans argued during the debate. These products are not inexpensive and they are going to be misused if they are placed in elementary school boys' bath. That's not even the argument, you idiots. Fucking Republicans are so stupid. That's what you're arguing, it's an economic situation? How about it makes no sense, it doesn't follow science? You stoops. Republican state rep Avery Bourne fumed, who's missing the point. Is that her? Yep. Like I said, she knows exactly what the fuck she's talking about. <laughs> Mother, you can tell who's on the right side of the argument. Look at that. That's a pretty hot teacher or whatever. Nice smile, fucking rack. Nick, that's sexist. Oh, for the love of my sister's box. Shut up. <laughs> Case in point, campuses like Loyola University where janitors are dealing with all kinds of pranks, tampering, vandalism, sanitary pads would end up on the mirrors in the sinks, down the toilet, sounds like my sisters, down the toilet and completely thrown out, one student's group complained. I'm telling you, there is no logic here. Republican State Senator Jill Tracy warned before the uh, state ignored her and passed the bill. We've got to quit playing these stupid, silly games here and get real and get fiscally responsible. Um, it's not about fiscal use. If I could, I'd grab this microphone and I'd beat your brains out with it because that's what she deserves. That's what she deserves. <laughs> Unbelievable. Do you see what I'm saying, guys? Whether it's tampons in the men's room, whether it's pronouns, whether it's changing the language to, you know, fucking two spear. All, this is a cultural, it's a wave 
My question is how long have they, I know they've been letting it out incrementally over the years, but there's a tsunami of this shit. Like, it's too, it's not an agenda. It's, I'm telling you, the 10 guys that run the world have decided um, the United States is going to become a socialist Marxist shithole. They decided it. And we'll see if the people on the right have any balls. I don't even see them on TV arguing about it. It's really disappointing. Uh, that is it for the week. Again, thank you so much uh, for being here for us. Don't forget to sign up monthly at thecomicsgym.com and we uh, patreon.com, nickdip.com, click on my tour button, and cameo.com. If you want me to roast a friend or relative, go to cameo.com. I'll make a video on my phone. It's a lot of fun. You guys think that I will say it? You're very welcome. I will hopefully see you guys. I know it's sold out. Governor's in Long Island tomorrow night uh, or at the Paramount Theater in Peekskill, New York, the next night. Uh, hope to see you there. Have a great weekend if I don't. Bye.